was a world where every man, regardless of his contribution to society, had the same as the other man. Some would say it was the perfect example of how the world should be. There would be no worries about tomorrow. Everyone had what they needed. There would be no jealousy as your neighbor had the same as you did. Humans were all equal. There should be no disparities amongst people. That was exactly what the world had come to. After all, no one wanted to live in a world where insecurity was the order of the day. Families fighting for control of dynasties, governments wrestling for more power. Such was the nature of humans wanting more and more. Did Plato not argue that private ownership of properties and goods would encourage selfishness? Was he not right? The powerful preyed on the weak. That was how it had always been. Oppression and suppression. Tools used to subdue people like they were slaves. People rebelled, as they had always done to past government, and after long debates on how to move on, they decided that every man should get what he deserved. Equal treatment. That was the new religion. That was what the world had become. Right now, at this very moment, even though great philosophers only theorized about living in this kind of world, they believed it was the perfect world, one without violence, where human beings had learned to subdue themselves and become rational, morally upright people. Resources would thrive because people would be using them the right way. There would be no exploitation, no discrimination. There would be no rich. was a world where every man, regardless of his contribution to society, had the same as the other man. Some would say it was the perfect example of how the world should be. There would be no worries about tomorrow. Everyone had what they needed. There would be no jealousy as your neighbor had the same as you did. Humans were all equal. There should be no disparities amongst people. That was exactly what the world had come to. After all, no one wanted to live in a world where insecurity was the order of the day. Families fighting for control of dynasties, governments wrestling for more power. Such was the nature of humans, wanting more and more. Did Plato not argue that private ownership of properties and goods would encourage selfishness? Was he not right? The powerful preyed on the weak. That was how it had always been. Oppression and suppression. Tools used to subdue people, like they were slaves. People rebelled as they had always done to past government. And after long debates on how to move on, 
they decided that every man should get what he deserved. Equal treatment. That was the new religion. That was what the world had become. Right now, at this very moment, even though great philosophers only theorized about living in this kind of world, they believed it was the perfect world, one without violence, where human beings had learned to subdue themselves and become rational, morally upright people. Resources would thrive because people would be using them the right way. There would be no exploitation, no discrimination. There would be no rich, no poor, just people. The schools where children learn would teach them how to live in a society like that, a sort of brainwashing. If they wanted a happy society, they had to live in harmony with their neighbors. That in itself was not a bad thing. But where was the means to protect oneself if such a system failed? There were no measures in place. For the average Tom, Dick, and Harry, it seemed like a beautiful world. They had their wife and kids, and the government shared the resources amongst everyone as equally as they could. Who knew the world could be so peaceful? Digging deeper into this perfect glass ball, the world was shaping out to be, there were some cracks, cracks that no one wanted to notice. Blissful ignorance. If it wasn't seen, it wasn't real. There were the optimists, those who clung tightly to hope that everyone could live in harmony. People didn't always have to live in chaos. The old world was plagued with wars, suicides, insecurity, and all different vices. People suffered under the tyranny of leaders and powerful men alike. Humans had gotten here already, meaning that everything could be even better. When there was cooperation, there was little that could not be achieved. That was how the Tower of Babel was built, right? Great buildings rose up, beautiful structures got erected, and the cities were pleasant to the eye. Most houses had the same structure and size, treating everyone as equally as possible. It was a beautiful world, one where everyone should feel safe in. Teach the masses contentment. That was the unspoken rule of the government. They had to present a united front. Together they abolished the concept of money. What determined what a person got was their worth to the society. It was an almost fail-safe form of ruling. It encouraged everyone to work hard. But human beings could never live with such restrictions for a long time. No matter how much one tried, there would always be the greedy, the selfish, and the cheats. Those kind of people would find their way of lives unappealing and look for ways to get more than they deserved. Books have been in existence since the dawn of time. They were always the ones responsible behind any government's upturning. They would look at equality and scoff, not wanting to be at the same level as anyone else. They saw the cracks in the seemingly perfect world and decided that the only way to fix the cracks was to shatter the glass ball and rebuild it from scratch. They wanted to seize control 
and they wouldn't rest until they got it. Their beliefs would be that people shouldn't live in a cage. Everyone should be able to control their own lives and get whatever they wanted, even if it meant cheating others. People should be able to choose whether they wanted to be good or bad. They would band together and overthrow the government. Everything that good men and women worked hard to achieve would eventually be destroyed. Whose fault would that be? Perhaps one could attribute it to the rotten nature of humans that some gave in to. At first, the government might try to reason with them, thinking there could be a way out as it usually was. Surely, they would have had multiple attempts by the people to overthrow them or cause unrest. This time around, people would be ready to give their lives to the cause. They no longer wanted to sit home while a bunch of nose-pressed people dictated what they could get or couldn't get. The innocent would be left to suffer the consequences of an overthrown government. It would be inevitable that the government would be the first place of attack. Every successful coup started with taking away the power from those in charge. The military would try to stop them, of course. But when sheer numbers of people revolt, there were only so many that could be killed or arrested. The military would be overwhelmed and they would either flee from the violence or be destroyed by it. There would be little to no dignity as people would be reduced to the lowest forms of themselves so they could live. Parents would abandon their children to run and friends would betray one another. No one could have seen it coming. One day, families would be eating together or playing together. Men and women would be working when utter mayhem would descend. Screams would fill the air as all manner of atrocities would be happening. What would be the impact of the fall of what should have been a perfect world. That's right, chaos. In a world where no one dictated what was right or wrong and people could get away with anything, chaos would reign. <laughs>